history. We have the greatest military capability in world history. We are the people. Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I was listening to uh, the Trump rally in Alabama and uh, I lost track of time. So I'm a little bit late. Sorry about that. I think I'm a little bit late. I'm not sure. It shows two minutes. I got me a new computer. So, you know, I love this computer. I do not love this camera, but I can always get another camera. But everything else about this computer that I've been setting up, it took me like maybe 30 minutes to get it set up. I need to unplug it because I actually have battery. Oh, that made everything a little darker. Maybe I need to adjust that. Oh, well. Okay. Anyway, I hope that you had an awesome Saturday. I had a busy Saturday. I was copying pictures. I'm copying all of them in one file, and then I'm going to move them all to my flash drive. I think that's my plan anyway. And uh, so in copying pictures, though, it's given me an opportunity to go back through these memories. It's been pretty awesome. Like all the concerts that I went to in 2018 and 2019 and 2017 and 2016. It's just really awesome to sometimes just go back through your memories. So that's what I've been doing today, and I have done nothing else. I didn't even cook dinner tonight. I lost track of time. I was talking to one of my friends who we were solving the problems of the world. And then at the very end, we always say, but that's okay because Jesus wins. So Jesus is going to win. He's going to overcome all. So we don't have to worry. We don't have to worry. We just have to trust God. So let's jump into some prayer. We're going to do Psalm 3 tonight. Um, I haven't read all of it, but I'm going to read it to you. But I think that's all I'm going to read tonight and do a very quick salvation message so I can get away from my desk. I've been here. I've been here most of the day. I hope that's just a shadow and not like a computer's catching on fire type thing. Sorry. All right, well, let's jump into some prayer. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. We just thank you, God, because you are on your throne and you are in control. We really don't even have to worry about what's going on because there is absolutely nothing that gets by you. You see everything. You hear everything, God, and you have a plan and purpose for us all. All we have to do is trust you and accept salvation through your son, Jesus. And just trust you to lead and direct us every day. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. Thank you for helping us navigate this narrow path that we're on. Thank you, God, for you are magnificent and powerful and mighty, and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. You, God, are caring and kind and compassionate and loving, and you are patient, God. You want none to perish. You want all to be saved by your Son, Jesus Christ. You want to offer eternal life to all, God. Only you know all hearts and minds, God. Only you know who will accept Jesus and who will not. Our job is to share your truth and to share the gospel of Jesus with everyone. So, God, we just cry out to the lost. We love you, God. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul our mind, and our strength. And we do cry out to the lost God. We pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow them 
to be drawn to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home. God, we just pray for, um, for you to draw them back to you, that they would repent and that they would, that you would reconcile their relationship, God. We pray for all the disasters that are happening all over the world, the earthquakes, the floods, the droughts, the uh, volcano eruptions, all the many things that are going on all at the same time, God. The uprising of people in their countries that are not happy with their government, God, that the government is taking their rights away. God, we just pray for the people. We pray that their governments will listen. We pray for the people in Afghanistan, God, the innocent people, the people that just want out of there, God. We pray that you would provide a path for them. We pray for protection for them. We pray that our military would go and protect them like the other countries' militaries are protecting, God. God, we pray for all the people that are sick. We just praise you for the ones that you've healed this week. We just pray that, that you will continue to help them to feel stronger and stronger and that you will restore, you will give them restorative healing. You will restore their bodies to good as new. God, we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. Pray for people that are in disaster, God, that you would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus. That they would be drawn more to you, God, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, I think everybody is watching Donald Trump speak, and I was listening to that too, and there are some that are going before him. But I asked YouTube to save it in my watch later, so I'm going to watch it later. I really felt like I'm really trying to be more obedient to this call. I'm really trying to um, be more consistent. I think I've done a better job of being more consistent this week. Um, but we shall see. I don't even been quite a crazy day, but it's all right. It's okay. All right, so let's read Psalm 3. Oh, wait a minute. We're first doing this over here. Okay, let's talk about the themes of Psalms. The book of Psalms contains responses to God by individuals in the community in worship. Various type of Psalms have been identified including hymns of praise, royal psalms, laments, thanksgivings, enthronement psalms, and wisdom psalms. Above all, psalms is a book of praise. A reading of the 150 psalms will shift the focus to the majesty of the God who is to be worshipped, for he is worthy of eternal praise. So it looks like Psalms is divided up in five books. The book of Psalms generally is outlined according to the various collections or books compromising the whole. So book one is compromised of Psalms 1 through 41. Book two is compromised, I mean is comprised not compromised, is comprised, sorry, is comprised of Psalm 42 through 72. Book 3 is Psalm 73 through 89. Book 4 is Psalm 90 through 106. And book 5 is Psalm 107 through 150. Each of these five books ends with a doxology of praise to the Lord. The entirety of Psalm 150 functions as a doxology to Book 5 and also as a fitting conclusion to the Book of Psalms. So that's what my study Bible says about Psalms. We talked about the past three nights. We talked about 
the author, the date, the background, the themes, and the outline. So that, that concludes what my study Bible says about the book of Psalms. Hey, my friend Josie, I thought you'd be listening to President Trump. My friend Josie is here. I thought I would be alone. I thought I'm going to be alone because it's Saturday and people are going to be doing stuff. All right. So the Lord helps his troubled people. The Psalm of David when he fled Absalom, his son. Absalom, his son. Lord, how they have increased to trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me. My glory in the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. So, you know, um, let's go back to one and two. As I was reading this, I was thinking that that is probably how people that are not saved, that don't understand why we cling to our Bible, why we trust God, because they don't believe that there is anyone that will help us. And they don't believe, really, bottom line, there's anybody that will help them. So that's why they say there is no help for him in God. But there is help. There is help through God. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. Oh, your TV's not hooked up? How was your day? Well, you can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it live on YouTube. You don't have to watch it on TV. You can watch it on your phone. But I'd rather you be here with me. I'm going to watch it later. I'm not watching it right now. I lay down and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people who have set themselves against me around. So David is not afraid. He trusts God. He trusts God with everything that he has. And it's pretty sad that his own son is who is trying to track him down and kill him. So he laid down and slept and he awoke for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. God does not want us to be afraid of people. He wants us to have courage and to be strong. And so, arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your temple. Your people. Sorry, not your temple. Your people. So, let's read what... My study Bible says about that, about what we just read. Sometimes it's enlightening and sometimes I don't understand the study part. We'll give it a shot. So David's flight from his son Absalom prompted this psalm. In his turmoil, David expressed confidence in the Lord as a shield about him. The small shield of leather or metal was carried by a warrior for protection against an enemy's sword or spear. Like this shield, God protecting his people. Paul described the shield of faith, providing our protection against the power of evil. Well, I was wondering what I was going to read tonight in the New Testament. And I think we will read Ephesians 6. And we will read about the full armor of God. Because that, that concludes our psalm that we were reading. I don't know where my... Oh, there it is. I don't know where my Bible thing... I'm putting a 
marker in it so I don't lose where we are in Psalms. Well, let's go to Ephesians. So in case I didn't say, we just got through reading Psalms 3. Well, let's go to Ephesians. Sometimes I think everybody knows what I'm doing, so I apologize. If sometimes you're lost, I apologize. Sometimes I'm lost too. Well, let's go to Ephesians 6. And let's talk about the full armor of God. And I pray it on every day. And I, I have talked about it many and many times here. But we might just read all of Ephesians 6. But I'm probably not going to read the study part. Because I'm not going to be on here for very long. Children, obey your parents. This, this is the beginning of Ephesians 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. You know, if we honor our parents, there is a blessing that we will live longer if we honor our parents. That's not very popular right now, and it's not the going thing. But biblically, it is what we're supposed to do. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. And so it talks about bond servants and masters. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart, as as to Christ, not with our service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord, and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. So everything that we do, we are to do as to the will of um, doing the will of God from the heart with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. So some of those things that you don't want to do, there are things that I don't enjoy doing either. Do them as if do them the very best you can as if you're doing them for the Lord. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is slave or free. And you masters do the same things to them, giving up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven, and there is no partiality with him. There is no partiality with him. You know, God is not a respecter of persons. People in heaven that have had their riches here, they are going to be no better than the homeless person on the street that has absolutely nothing but God. Many people are going to be surprised when they get to heaven that they're not super special people that they were here on earth. We're all going to be the same. And we're and God is our master. God is our master. Here and there. Okay, so the whole armor of God. Let's talk about the whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I pray this on every day. And I don't pray it on from the Bible. I have a sheet of paper that kind of explains and breaks down what every part of the armor of God is. And so that's what I pray on every day. And um, I think I still have it in my phone. I can, I can share it here. I have a brand new computer, though, and... Um, 
there's a lot of stuff I don't have on it already. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand there for having girded your waist with truth. So we put on a belt of truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So your breastplate goes over your heart. So you put on a, a breastplate of righteousness. In having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that means we're always ready to go to share the gospel of peace. I usually touch my feet because my feet are what are going to take me to share the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. This is our shield. Your shield is what protects you from spears and arrows and stuff. So this is our shield. with which you will be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation. This is our helmet. It goes right here, our helmet of salvation. And the sword of the Spirit. That's our word of God. This is our sword of the Spirit, which, which is the word of God Praying always with all prayer. Prayer. We need to, like, that is our armor too, is prayer. We do it with two hands, but I just have one. Prayer. Praying always with all prayer. In supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance in supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an, ambas an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So let's just go ahead and finish this up but that you also may know my affairs and how I am doing. Tychius, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to me, whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, that you may know our affairs and that he may comfort your hearts. Peace to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. So that was Ephesians 6. And I wasn't even planning on going there, but that's where God led me tonight. That's where the Holy Spirit led me tonight was to Ephesians 6. Okay. Well, I'm going to do a really, really short salvation message tonight. And uh, it's really hard to read because it's very tiny. It's very tiny. I got this at YEC one year. And I found, I found, I think, the back, which is the same thing. And I'm going to try to put it on there. So it says, key to life. God loves you and has a great plan for your life. Jesus said, my purpose is to give life in all its fullness. John 10.10 10. Sin separates you from God. We are all sinners. Romans 3.23 The price for sin is death. Romans 6.23 The price is already paid. God is showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. 
Romans 5, 8. Jesus bridged the gap of separation between God and man. Wow, these are hard to read. It's free. Eternal sal salvation is a free gift. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Do not, you, you don't earn or work your way to heaven by morality or religion. Jesus is the key to life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to me, come to the Father, except through me. John 14, 6. It's up to you to ask Jesus into your heart and pray. And pray this prayer. Jesus, I ask you into my heart to be my Savior and Lord. Forgive my sins and give me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, I pray. It is important to be baptized, go to church, pray, read your Bible, and share with others what Jesus has done for you. And this is called the Gospel Key Ring. This is... Somebody else's. I want to make sure that nobody thinks that I'm stealing that. So if you said that prayer and you invited Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. I know that's a very short prayer, but you know what? There is no magic salvation prayer. We have to believe in our heart who Jesus is and that he died for us. And we need to ask for forgiveness because we are sinners. We are all sinners. But as far as a big flowery prayer, it is not necessary. So do pray to God and ask Him to lead you to a church where you can fellowship with others and you can learn from the Bible. The church that preaches and teaches the Bible is where you want to go. And do follow up in baptism like Jesus did. Well, I think that I have come and done everything that I feel like God was calling me to do tonight. So I do want to give you a blessing from God. And I do want to pray. And then I'm going to be on my way. That rhymed. Okay, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless, thee, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We all need some peace. That is God's blessing to you. I just read it for him. Okay, well, let's pray. Josie, do you have anything that you want to pray for? I'll give Josie a little bit of time to um, answer me. There's a little bit of a delay. So I'm doing a live on Facebook on my on Awesome Treasures Ministry. And I am doing a video for YouTube that I will have to upload. I'll let you know how this com new computer uploads. It's got to be faster than my other one. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Sometimes she types something in while I pray, and then I'll look and see if I miss something, and then we can always add things. God, we just come to you, and we just thank you, God, for all the many things that you do in our lives, for protection, for provision, for blessings. God, we just thank you for healing. We thank you for all that you do. We just... Uh, 
We pray for the people that are still sick, God. We just pray for continued healing for them, that you would be with them. We just pray, God, for um, all the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth and that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. God, I pray for Josie and her family, for her brothers and her sisters and their families and her children and their families. I just pray for blessings and protection and provision, God. I pray for my family. I pray the same for my family, for protections, protection, provision, and blessings, God. That you would just continue to heal my daughter and give her strength. I thank you that um, for all the blessings that you have placed in my life, God. Thank you for my friend Judy. And uh, I want to lift up her request to you, but they're going to be unspoken because she asked me to make them that way, God. So just please, you know what she is dealing with, God. Just please give her your guidance and wisdom. And uh, just give her a peace, God. If she makes a decision, um, just pray that it is in line with your plan and purpose for her life, God. We just uh, pray, God, that there would be a Jesus movement in our country and all over the world that cannot be stopped, God. That it would just overtake so many people. There are many such Jesus movements going on and concerts. Let us worship concerts, God. And I know that people are being saved. I thank you for these people. I pray for protection for them. I think the Jesus people, the circuit riders, I think they are in Africa right now. So please protect them, God. And please let many come to know Jesus as their Savior. Please let them be successful. Please keep them safe. And uh, just pray, Lord, for... We know that salvation is so much, is so very important to you. God, we pray that you would give us the boldness to share your truths, to stand for what's right, to stand for truth that you would give us the boldness to share the gospel of Jesus everywhere we go. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, did I get everyone? Oh, I didn't pray for Mike and the boys. God, I just lift up Mike and the boys to you. I just pray for guidance and wisdom for Mike. I thank you for his willingness to take in these young men and try to, um, to try to uh, teach them about Jesus and to teach them how to be um, good citizens for our country, God, to help them get the education that they need so that they can be they can be good contributing men, men God, despite despite of the things that they've been through and the hardships that they've been through, God, that you have a plan and purpose for their lives. We pray for Austin too, God. We just pray that you would protect him from this disease if he hasn't gotten it and uh, that you would just protect all others that have not gotten it. Uh, there's so many that I know that do have this. and We just pray for healing for them. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, my friend, I got to get off of here. I can't keep my, my chair still. I don't know. I just can't do it. I guess if I had a, a steel chair, I could be still. But since I have this chair that goes back and forth, I can just move back and forth. So anyway, all right. Well, y'all have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow, which is Sunday. Try to go to church and learn more about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and try to go to church and worship and fellowship with brothers and sisters. That's what my plan is for tomorrow. Um, so much love and cyber hugs.
Till I see you again, good night.